Today we're going to go through some basics on just getting started and understanding how you can create panda graphs using your IntelliQuilter. So the first thing we do is that turn, we turn our machine on. I'm using my stick, so the hence it is in demo mode. But we can do, we can play with your tablet and understand all the features just whilst you have the tablet off your machine in front of the TV or sitting at the kitchen table, wherever you're most comfortable. You can sit and play and learn the software that you have at your fingertips. So the first thing, uh, the first screen we always see when we uh, turn our tablet on is the main menu. And we simply have to make a decision on which button we want to touch. And at this point, we're going to design, sew a quilt, and we're going to start a new quilt. What type of quilt will that be? And in this instance, we are going to choose pantograph. Because this is not on my machine, I can't mark on quilt or trace on quilt the boundary or the block that we're putting the pattern, the pantograph patterns inside of. So I choose always to enter rectangle manually. Now, when I'm teaching a new owner, I do recommend that you have measured your quilt top and written those measurements down and determined which way you're going to load this on your machine before we actually enter the information on this screen. And if the pattern suits, I tend to choose to load a quilt sideways the long side on your leaders so that you have less advances that you need to make you can be far more efficient when you do it that way so if i've got a large quilt let's say it's uh, 60 by 80 i would actually put in the width as 80 and the height as 60 but in actual fact that's what i've measured I will always recommend, strongly recommend, that you put in a larger size to allow for any anomalies of that quilt top and to ensure that the pattern will always cover the entire quilt. But if you forget to do that, then this is what this webinar is going to be all about. But first of all, let's continue. And there is my block that I'm going to put a pattern inside of. So now we need to select a catalogue and touch the patterns I want to use on the odd rows. Zoltan has done a wonderful job in designing this feature and he's challenged designers to come up with two separate rows that will merge together, that will flow together. So let's go find a, um, a panto. I'm going to choose a full row panto for now. This is one that doesn't interlock. And here's some of those pantos that I've happened to have in this particular folder. And you can see that oh, some of them do interlock. I probably haven't filed these correctly. Let's just choose circle play for now for the odd rows. And traditionally, we nearly always choose the same row for the even rows as well. And you can see on this one, that it always comes in at 12 inches, 12 inches row height. And the designer has done an exceptional job with this particular uh, design because immediately you can see that it all nests together. And I'll increase the gap so you can see where the row starts and stops and how it joins together. So this one to me would be very difficult to match up perfectly when you are advancing the quilt without a gap in between. But for this exercise to learn how this all, some of the features, I'll use this design. Now, first thing I always do is I go to the true size button in the zoom just to see how big this truly is. Put the grid on. And you can pan around to see one, two, three, four, four and a half inches wide for that large one. But the smaller circles are only just over an inch. It's an inch and a quarter, pretty much. 
it's probably not a bad scale as it is so it really is going to come down to how dense you want this over the quilt top uh, and also your throat space now depending on the size of your machine you have to look at the pattern height to determine what you can fit for most machines you're only going to get one row at a time and then you'll waste the rest of your throat space you could increase this to uh, say around 16 inches and let's check the true size that makes it one two three four quite a bit bigger those circles depending on how much space you want unquilted but it actually is still a really nice design the smallest circles are still over an inch um, and so it would work quite nicely over a quilt I do like this one now if you're one of those that don't like the pattern cut off there are other choices we can also do um, stitching one row at a time is we can touch this button here called the clip off and what it does I'll take the grid off so you can see it, it only stitches it only plans for a, a full repeat so what I can do here now is I can use the skew button and I can squeeze it up look only one click and we get another repeat in or I can stretch it out to fill up a space but it's still only there's there's no pattern cut off because this is uh, designed on a square personally for that particular design I think it is better to leave it as the original and just skew it to get a full repeat and then if you want a full repeat then you need to change the row height down as well to get a full repeat in the other direction and then you can go back to the skew again to stretch it out so that's how you've got one two three four rows and they'd be at 15 inches high true size grid on and you can pan around to see the smaller circle is still a one and a quarter inches So that's just learning um, two features. I'll go zoom full again, which was the clip on and the skew for this particular design. I'm going to back out of this now and let's go find another pattern that makes it easy to demonstrate. Let's go for the Celtic horse panto in both rows. So here we are with this design where the horses are all traveling from left to right. Now, again, the uh, it's actually probably a little bit too close. It's going to touch. So we can use the gap to get a bit of breathing space between those rows. It looks a bit more natural. And the other thing I want to show you is when uh, I've moved them further apart, the pattern height, the row height is still 12 inches, but the pattern height has now changed to 10.8. And the difference there is row height minus the gap equals the pattern height. And that's how much room we've got. So it's actually become a little bit smaller because I've moved those, uh, the, those rows more apart. Okay, now we have these other controls at the bottom. Uh, flip X and flip Y, but we've got them twice. So those on the left is actually going to affect all those odd rows, row one, three, and five. And these controls on the in the middle of the screen are going to affect your even rows, rows two and four. So if I go flip X on the odd rows, you watch the uh, the odd rows and they're going to change the horses to be traveling in the other direction. This can be especially handy if you don't want things to line up quite so much, but we can also offset as well. So that's one way of doing it. 
Flip X is still the odd row, uh, sorry, flip Y is still the odd rows, but it's going to flip them on their heads. So they're mirroring each other as well as heading in the other direction. So there could be a case where you want to do this on a, on a strippy quilt, for example, and you can make something quite interesting. Um, but just showing you what these controls are doing. So let's go back to how it was originally. Now, obviously, these two will do exactly the same, but it's the even rows. Right? Now, that's what those controls are for when you are playing with a pantograph design. The next one we need, I, I want to show you is what the offset button does. Now, there are two ways we can offset and I'm not sure which way I've got it. We'll soon find out. We can use the arrows and here's all the odd rows. Can you see how they're all moving to the right? They're offset 19, 20%, 21. I could drag it as well so you can touch your screen and drag it to where you want it to be. You do have the automatic 50% if you want to do it that way as well. So that's what the offset will do so that you can randomize things just a little bit more. Go back to zero. When uh, we're on this screen, we also have this gear in the top right uh, side of the controls. And if we click on that, we get this other choice, progressive offset. So if we want to change that, at the moment it's disabled. So every alternate row was going to be affected the same. If I'm going to enable the progressive offset, finish. Now when I go to the offset, as I drag a row across, every row is affected progressively. So you can see what's happening. So every row will be stitched differently. Not one row lines up with any of them below. So that can be a really handy feature. Now, when you're using the offset and you put the clip on, you lose it because you're just getting that exact repeat and it doesn't affect, and that affects every single row. Okay, so there is no offset that you can use if you're using the clip on function to only stitch a perfect repeat. We can turn that off again and the offset button reappears. So we can skew even if we have offset. And now we click the skew. You can still use the skew editing tool after you have offset now. Whether, I can't see the point in this, you're still not going to get an exact repeat, but you can make things look a little bit different depending on what the, uh, the, what the pattern is on whether that works or not, but you do have the ability to use skew, skew. So the only time you can't use the offset is when you have clip on and then it disappears and that's the reason why it disappears. Right, there is still another button on the screen that we have not discussed, and that is the shift button. Now, if we choose to, say, so let's flip this one, we can, I'll go back and change my, disable my progressive offset, and I can move these over just a bit. Now, even do it to 50%. Now, if I touch the shift button, because we've got this gap now in between here, we could change things a little bit more. We could, the shift button will move the odd rows up and down. So you could potentially create a bigger gap in between the mirrored horses, as if they're running along the edge of a lake or some water and uh, their shadows are in the uh, water upside down. Or we could balance this more so that they uh, equal each other out um, as well. So the shift button will move a design up and down rather than the offset button, which is left to right on the odd rows only. So there are times and places definitely that um, I do like using that shift button, especially if I've been 
flipping my rows uh, on the Y axis just to get it more balanced. And then you can play with the gap and get things closer together. And you can still play a little bit more. To see if that would look nicer and it all comes back to the pattern you choose but I wanted to show you what that shift button will do and it's the same as the offset you're purely affecting the odd rows when the progressive offset has been disabled okay now one little hint here if you're using a go back to geometrics we go and find just the simple arc 2 which is the S curve and put that one in this is another really good example I'm just going to make it down quite a bit smaller so you've got uh, true size oh we could still go smaller than that okay go back to full I can change the gap so I'm flattening the pattern out but it is getting closer together. Now this is where you can also, I'll show you true size. So it's still a good more than an inch apart. That's fine. But now if you wanted to use offset, and remember I've got the, I can check behind the gear and my progressive offset is enabled. So now if I want to do offset, I can drag this and we get that three-dimensional effect. That's one of the really good results of using the offset to get a totally different effect from a very simple design. So next I am going to actually design a pantograph using most of those tools, but specifically for the two customer quilts that I have on my machine to continue with helping you to get yourself out of trouble when you've made an right. error. I actually have some customer quilts that I'm going to be showing this to you with. So I'm going to use those measurements and the design that she's chosen, especially for this class. So it's Design Sew Quilt, Start New Pantograph. And I always measure the customer's quilt top whilst it's here in front of me and I write it down in my work order. So I've chosen, because there's two of them, they're exactly the same, the same size. Well, hopefully they're exactly the same size. I'm actually going to load them on the same backing as well. So they're going to be loaded horizontally, uh, sideways as such. So the length of these quilts is 78 inches and they are about uh what were they 61 and a half so 122 long so let's say 125 long we'll get both of these quilts covered with the design so they'll go on sideways the two single bed sized quilts so this customer has chosen a design dave hudson the digitech designed one with the improved ones and she wanted random stars on this quilt we weren't real keen i'll take this grid off for now weren't real keen on them all lining up so we chose to flip the X on one of the rows on the even rows and we're going to move them over so they're a bit more offset and we'll close the gap a bit as well just so they're a little bit more random now the pattern height is still 12.766 and we've chosen to drop it down to let's go to true size so you can see this is my grid and I'll pan around pattern height potentially I just want it just under the six inches mark and then on my horizon I can get four rows in so I'm looking both at what this number is the pattern height number plus 
uh, and I'm not sure if you realize because I closed the gap the actual row height is 5.508 and then if you add 0.352 the gap to it you'll end up with the 5.86 so what we physically need is the pattern height that is from the highest point of the pattern to the lowest point of the pattern so that's the space we need to be able to fit this in your throat space okay so let's just zoom out just a wee bit more so we can see that there's no obvious line between the rows are only slightly interlocked but that is enough to make it look random and I'd be happy and my customer was definitely happy with that uh, look where the stars don't look all lined up um, and they're a lot more randomized so finished and of course I'm going to choose continuous all the way around the edge and you can't change that once you've accept it, accepted it. So that is my design and how I have chosen it. Now of course with Panagraph designs we have those choices of flipping either the odd rows Y or X so from side to side or top to bottom and you can choose either you can offset them and interlock them as well by closing the gap and you have so many editing tools in that function that I encourage you to play with those find a, a simple design that you can play with to understand those features as well as simply play and design so that's how I designed my pantograph for this particular customer one thing to note when you go to stitch this is that of course each row is different so you have to be every alternate row all lines up exactly the same so the offset is exactly the same for every single row but when we're choosing to stitch we need to understand that uh, when we, especially when we're realigning, that we find the correct point to realign to.